Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I went vegan. I do have a video up about why I'm vegan, but today I thought I would just talk a little bit about my transition to maybe give you some ideas about how to transition. This is just one way to do it. There's lots of different ways. So I'm not saying this is the right way, it's just a way. As mentioned in a why I'm vegan video, I went vegetarian when I was about 14 years old, but I was a really crappy vegetarian where I still ate specifically chicken nuggets sometimes. So not incredibly often, but I wasn't like really a vegetarian. <laughs> but I definitely wasn't eating any red meat or anything like that. I was just one of those kids that like if you went to a restaurant and the menu kind of overwhelmed me and I didn't think that I would like anything on it, like the safe zone was chicken tenders. When I went to college, I fell into <laughs> that situation that a lot of vegetarians fall in where they overdo it on cheese. So I was taking my, at this point, my vegetarianism actually very seriously and I was not eating any meat at all. Unfortunately, uh, the dining halls that I had access to in college and that my meal plan was paying for only allowed me to have cheese pizza, grilled cheese sandwich, the Caesar salad with cheese on it, and then I would go to like Family Dollar and buy like a toad Tostino's <laughs> queso in the jar with like chips and that was like the only thing I ate. Oh, and those like um, biscuit stick things that you dip in cheese. I don't even know, but the, the, I was like all I was eating for a full year and towards the, the last few months of that, I started feeling really sick. Like every time I ate, I felt really sick afterwards and it turned out that I was actually developing an allergy to cheese, which is actually pretty common in that age range of person, and it is actually possible to overdo it on a food so much that you make yourself allergic. At that point, that was the push that I needed to go vegan because I knew that I had wanted to. I just felt like, oh, but I could never give this up, give this up, I just, I, I'm just not there yet, but when I stopped being able to eat the thing that was holding me back really, that solidified the decision for me. Went home and over the summer I went vegan. That makes it sound like it was actually a long time of change. Uh, I did the classic, went to bed a vegetarian and woke up vegan. Didn't do like the, oh, I'll take this out and replace it with this and then go really slowly. I was just like, boom, vegan, 100%, this is me now. And that worked out really well for me but I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that dairy made me feel like crap and that I already wasn't eating meat. So literally the only thing that I really had to like part ways with was eggs. Yeah, it was actually pretty easy. And I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that I wasn't buying my own groceries at that time and that I was about to start buying my own groceries and I hadn't really cooked for myself up until then. So I spent that summer kind of like really learning how to cook for myself and the foods that I liked and then when I went back to school I lived in an apartment style dorm so like an apartment that was still owned by the school where we had a full kitchen and I actually went grocery shopping didn't have a meal plan or anything and then bought and prepared all my own food. Now as far as the lifestyle aspect because you know being a vegan doesn't just mean that you eat a vegan diet it also means in all aspects of your life you do not use any animal product or engage in things that are detrimental to animals in any capacity. So that was a bit of a slower transition. All right, I don't believe in being wasteful. This would be more difficult if I had like a kitchen full of standard American diet foods. I would feel very bad about just chucking them all away and then buying all vegan food. I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I was very lucky that I still transitioned while I was living with my parents. But you can apply what I'm about to tell you to food if that suits you better. What I did for products was that I used up what I had and then when I needed to repurchase something, I would buy the vegan cruelty-free version. So even though I was vegan, I would still be using products that didn't necessarily have the cruelty-free label on them only because it's so much more wasteful to just throw them away. But I know now that when I buy something, it's always gonna have the bunny on it. So if you have a household of non-vegan food and it makes sense for you to finish eating it all first, and then once you run out of something non-vegan, maybe buying the vegan alternative for it, 
I feel like that's a lot more economical, it's a lot more friendly to the planet, and you're still, you know, making the adjustments to ultimately be a lot more environmentally and ethically conscious, or whatever your reason for going vegan is, there's lots of different reasons. Also, just as a couple more tips that I thought were really helpful during me transitioning to the vegan diet was really gaining an appreciation for the taste of vegetables and for a lot simpler foods. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, I really learned how to cook vegetables in the way that I liked. I experimented a lot and eating in a very simple way uh, with very minimal ingredients is not only a good way to stay healthy, it's a good way to save money, it's a good way to know what you like so that you can make more and more creative things. I feel like a lot of people go into a vegan diet and they expect something amazing and then the first dish they make they don't really know how to handle uh, how to cook like seitan for instance and if it turns out crappy they're going to be upset about it and they're not going to want to pursue this diet anymore instead of jumping right into that you know maybe learn oh i eat rice and beans anyway how can i make rice and beans like the main portion of this meal i love tacos how can like if i just take the meat out of them and I replace like the sour cream and cheese with extra avocado, like how do I like that? Very simple basic things first, and then you can start experimenting with other things. That's another tip, just real quick. <laughs> vegan cheese, vegan meat, all those like direct swaps can be very expensive, which also chases people away from the diet, which is another reason why I think that pursuing a simplistic version of eating is a lot more sustainable in the long run, like getting to know the flavors that you like that are cheap, and then on like special occasions, which is what I do, you might add a little bit of like earth balance or a little bit of diet or something. It's one of those like unfortunate aspects that at this point in time, a lot of plant-based alternatives do cost more than the, the standard versions of these foods. They're working on changing that, as you may or may not know. Like I think it was the CEO of Beyond Meat or Impossible Foods that said that they're working on making their burgers cost less than the meat alternative in the next couple years, I think. So there's really no reason not to try them. Of course, it's a very individualized journey. Um, no one can really tell you how to do it or how it's gonna work for you. As many ways as there are to go vegan, there's that many ways to transition to a vegan diet. I hope that some information in this video was useful to you at all. If you have any questions, of course, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, please check out the links in my description. There's some information on my Patreon as well as my other social media sites. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.